Hello, Catherine here. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my video. In this video, I'm going to be outlining some of my basic life philosophy. And in this video particularly, I want to talk about reaching potential as a moral imperative. This is a belief that I have had since I was a teenager. If you have potential in the desire to reach your potential. The resources to pursue that potential. The ability to do it. And the support to do it. You owe it to yourself morally to do it. That's just a basic life rule of mine. Because without this, I would not have ticked off a few items on my bucket list. I would not have taken my education to the level it was. I wouldn't have pushed through some of those barriers. If I had listened to the naysayers, if I had taken all my failures to heart and dragged them along with me instead of immediately rebounding, then I think that I wouldn't be where I am. Now that's not to say I'm a super successful person, but I do tend to be successful in the things I put my mind to. I'm resourceful and adaptable, and those, those qualities have seen me through. Now this is not to brag. What this is is just an honest explanation. I believe that these things should not be shut in. It's not for the better of humanity for potential to be wasted. And when I think about how much potential and greatness is shut in around the world because of lack of resources, lack of support, it actually makes me incredibly sad. I think throughout history of all the people who were held back systematically, didn't have the freedom, didn't have the access to engage in a productive and potentially great way. I think all of us have potential to create in something. See what sticks. I've mentioned in other videos that I built up a business over a year. And on the eve of opening it, I pretty much killed it. And I did this out of fear, but there was something nagging me that it was the wrong thing to do. I could see the cards on the table for what they were. I didn't pick a good location. I didn't have the proper discipline to make sure I was there on time to open the store. I didn't have the experience or the expertise or the knowledge to actually run a business in terms of managing the cash flow, managing the expenses, managing taxes. I just didn't have it. And quite frankly, I wasn't really reaching out for the resources I needed to make sure I did it correctly. I think I saw it for the, the DOA that it was. And that's when I pulled the plug and, and immediately rebounded with a new pursuit. I didn't waste any time because that's literally what it would have been, a waste of time. I had to figure out what to do next. And the next thing I did, of course I returned to school, I went to trade school. I was bored after a couple months, it just wasn't for me. I needed something a bit more stimulating. I'm not trying to slag off the uh, the trade school at all. And in fact, it was a really <laughs> economical uh, and actually appropriate way to ease myself back into the school system, because I had been gone for four years. It was apparent that I needed to upgrade a bit. This is my personal truth, okay? Then I tried to do military training. I just didn't fit in well with that kind of hierarchy. I didn't... I was a bit too independent-minded to deal with something that strict. I was really good at the academic side of it, but I couldn't run very fast. 
I wasn't very strong. It, it just wasn't for me. I would have been a mediocre officer at best. And I knew that. I knew it in the pit of me. I knew it wasn't right. So I quit. They asked me not to quit, but I did. Because I was the one that was going to have to live with the mediocrity. And I wouldn't have been any source of inspiration or respect or admiration whatsoever as a mediocre of officer. How is that a good use of my resources? How is that a good use of the military's resources? You kind of see where I'm, where I'm getting with this. So I switched to business school and I fell in love with economics. I have pursued economics through the doctoral level. But I couldn't stop at the undergraduate level because I wasn't done. I wasn't at the potential I felt I had. And I was, I had enough social skills and, and people that believed in me to get me through to the master's level and then ask them for references so I can get to the doctoral level. Now, I may be in a different discipline um, technically, but I do still use economic theory in my doctoral work. It informs quite a bit of it. But I felt that the thing I was studying, which was energy, was not fully explored to its end, and I needed more, and that's why I did the doctorate. On the bucket list, I wanted to become a British academic. That is ridiculous, but you know what? I'm there. Because I put together the resources, and I had the support, I had the ability, and I had the desire, so I owed it. Owed it to myself. And now that that season of my life is coming to a close and I look towards the future, I had to figure out which direction to take. I've come out of this season also a polyglot, and I continue to study because I feel like I could be challenged more and more. I just don't get tired of being challenged. Is this an innate quality of mine? I think it is. But I have found ways, these different pathways, and these different ways of, of actually exploring and exploiting it. And I also feel a moral imperative to share some of the things I've learned. I think sometimes people sell themselves really short with their own potential and abilities. I really like seeing pe people who put themselves out there, like here on YouTube or Instagram. You know, I, I know that we kind of get a bit of a bit of flack, but here's the thing: people seek out others that are like them, that they like, that they want to be like. That includes me. I want to engage with the polyglot community. I want to see what I can use, what I can learn from, what I can respond to. I have been like an, a monk for four years. I basically shut down most of my social life to pursue these things as much as I can. And now I have to turn all that back out into the world. And the world can throw it right back at me, but you know what? I'm going to present it. At least I can say I have held true to my pr own personal philosophy. Whatever comes of this, if it's successful or not, I tried. And other pursuits will make themselves apparent to me. If I have this mindset, they will present themselves to me. Even more than methods, even more than, than schedules, mindset is what really, really drive success in things we want to do, especially difficult, long-term pursuits like foreign language or degrees or research or, or taking a skill or a craft to its highest abilities. Anyway, that is one of my major underlying fundamental philosophies of life. I'd be curious to hear what you have to say about it, anybody. <laughs> Um, but if you found this of value, or you like, subscribe, if you want to comment, I'm happy to hear feedback. My feelings don't really get hurt <laughs> with feedback. I'm happy to have it, no matter what form it is. So, there we are.
I put that out there for everybody. And I hope that you will take a look around the rest of my channel, find something of value, and I will see you later.